Do you feel good, Utah? <laughs> nice. I love it. They asked me, uh, what backdrop do you want? And I'm like, uh, can you make it look like my uncle's garage from 1987? So, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Good times, man. Uh, yeah, the fact that I can reference 1987 lets you know that uh, I'm over 40. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Some enthusiasm for that, dude. Um, I'm jealous of the kids today. Like they got the internet to shame their parents into paying attention to them. <laughs> yeah, something we didn't have. I realized this uh, a couple years ago when I was having anxiety attacks. I'm at the doctor's office and she goes, all right, she goes, before I give you any medication, she goes, I want to know what do you take for your ADHD? I was like, uh, this is the first time anyone's ever told me that I have that. <laughs> She's like, wow, anxiety and ADHD? You had to be bouncing off the walls when you were a kid. How did your parents handle that? I'm like, they hit me? <laughs> Which I do not condone hitting kids, no one takes, but ADHD and anxiety, like I could not stand still. Right, like what are you gonna do, a time out? I can't stand still, now I gotta go stand in the corner and look at a wall for an hour? Right, forget that, just smack me, let me go run around in a yard. Right, trying to fix ADHD and anxiety with a time out be like trying to stop someone's asthma attack by having them do jumping jacks. I got, a, I got nieces and nephews, and uh, yeah, like my sister, like she's changed over the years. But like I, my niece, when my niece was eight, I got her a Barbie, a Barbie for an eight-year-old girl. I thought that was nice. My sister gave me grief. She goes, uh, Barbie is not appropriate because she is gonna grow up and expect to look like Barbie. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous because when I was a kid, I had toys I never expected to turn into Chewbacca. <laughs> And besides, you need toys to be fantasy, right? You do. If they're realistic, they be depressing. <laughs> Say, hey, what do you got there? Some Transformers? The kid's like, no, I got a Steve in his cubicle. <laughs> He's complete with 30 grand of student loan debt. <laughs> a, bu a bunch of antidepressant medications. But he's got a bunch of staplers he can just get from a supply closet whenever he wants. It's different, man. Like, for some, like, everything happening, somehow Disney, like, is going, escaping through all this. Like, di hey, do you remember, like, Disney when we were kids? Like, every, fa every fairy tale was horrifying. Every one of them. Cinderella, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty. Just some young girl who ends up unconscious. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, and then uh, one day, some guy she doesn't know kisses her in the middle of the night. Yeah, in real life, that story ends in a court of law. <laughs> yeah, a lot of ladies get upset you can't find Prince Charming. You should be thankful. Hopefully, he's in jail. <laughs> I don't know. Well, one thing, like, uh, I I'm from, I live in New York, but I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, yeah, that's why I look like this is Ohio right here. So. <laughs> that is accurate. Just missing uh, Bob Seger poster back here. <laughs> You're right at home. But my niece, uh, my niece got cyberbullied. My sister told me my 14 year old niece got cyberbullied. I asked her, I go, I go, oh my, I go, what happened? She goes, someone said something mean on her Instagram. I go, okay. I go, and then what? And my sister goes, um, that's it. <laughs> All right, if you cannot handle someone being mean on social media, then don't go on there, right? Then don't. For two years, I had a popular web series. If it wasn't for people saying mean things, no one would have interacted with me. <laughs> that is the entire internet. My, I take it back. My videos, three types of people would, would interact with me. Cyber bullies, the people that would attack cyber bullies, and then my Aunt Judy to say that I'm handsome. <laughs> this is my favorite thing. After one of my videos, someone goes, hey, this guy looks like Ben Affleck if Ben Affleck had extra chromosomes. That's what they said about me. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm... But then people immediately attack this guy doing nothing but defending Ben Affleck. <laughs> 
just calling them all kinds of names. I'm like, hey, obviously someone never saw Goodwill Hunting. So like, hey, how about you go back and watch some Kevin Smith films? And then my Aunt Judy chimes in. She goes, hey, everyone, Ben Affleck is very talented, but I am very proud of my handsome nephew, Raymond. <laughs> and then all the comments stopped. <laughs> Because when her aunt leaves that comment, everyone's like, I think this Raymond might have special needs. And then, <laughs> that is the exact comment an aunt would leave if she was proud of her nephew. Um, I don't know. Do we, do we got parents here? By Ronald Clark? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. It's expensive. That's why I don't know if I can have it. It's expensive. I saw, I live in New York, and I saw an article in the New York Times it said the cost of having a kid in New York City is $45 a day. 45, that's, that's a lot, that's, I mean, I know you love your children, but that's like waking up every morning and seeing a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened when we were kids, like, remember when we were kids, those Sally Struthers commercials? It was 75 cents a day. Remember that, it was 75, that was it. If, if so I think if I have a kid, that might, I think I might outsource them. That's what I think. I think I'll send them overseas. And I'm not a drug. I'll give him like $100 a week. I'll give him $100 a week. He can adopt his five best friends. He'll be like the most popular kid in Guatemala. And then we both look like heroes. People are like, hey, how's your kid doing? I'm like, uh, he's overseas helping other children. <laughs> It's like, how old is he? He's nine. He's nine. We're, we're very progressive in this, uh, in this family. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't afford you. Um, I, I have had some good financial years. I don't want to brag, but a couple years ago, uh, Utah, I made eight student loan payments one year. <laughs> I made, that's a big deal because a year before it, I made zero. <laughs> This is my favorite thing. I remember making a student loan payment and then my bank immediately calling me and asking if I authorized that transaction. <laughs> yeah, that means that my bank thinks it's more likely that a thief would pay off my debt. <laughs> I'm like, no, thank you so much for checking. That was me. Uh, I don't know. And if you do the college, you gotta make it. If you go to college, that's my advice to the young, the youngins in here, if you go to college, you gotta make it. Student loan people, they're not gonna leave you alone. They won't, they still call me up. They go, oh, Mr. DeVito, when we gave you that money, we thought you'd pay us back. I'm like, I thought I was going to graduate. <laughs> right, like, don't get mad at me because you gambled on the wrong guy. <laughs> It's like, you should learn to live with your mistakes. <laughs> right, if you wanna call so you wanna yell at someone, let's call my high school guidance counselor. She got us all into this mess. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't blame myself for my financial problems, I do not. Uh, most of it's my fault, but not all of it. Uh, here's what I said, like, I'm from Ohio, but my grandparents are from Italy, and when I was 12, my grandfather died, my grandma gave me a shoebox full of pictures from his childhood and they were poor. Like they lived in this little sod house. My uh, grandfather had to sleep on a cot with his other five siblings. It looks brutal, yet as bad as it was for them financially, for some reason in 1912, my great grandfather owned a camera. <laughs> that said a lot about me. I thought I was bad with money. Turns out, no, I'm genetically inclined to make horrible financial decisions. <laughs> like I was doing a show in New York City and we're walking, uh, me and another comic are walking through Washington Square Park and we saw a homeless guy with a telescope. <laughs> and the other comedian immediately started making jokes. And I'm like, wait, hang on, leave this guy alone. I think I might be related to him. <laughs> I live in Queens, a story of Queens. Uh, we, we can get dogs, yeah. We can get dogs now in my apartment building. We can get dogs. My buddy Gary got a dog. I was like, hey man, I go, well, where'd you get that dog? And he goes, oh, I, I rescued it. I rescued it. Just say it's a rescue, right? Just say you rescued it? That's a grandiose way to say you got something for free. 
Right? If that's the case, these pants I'm wearing, I rescued them from JCPenney. <laughs> Also, for a while, I was dating a girl that lived in my apartment building. Uh, I liked her more than she liked me. Uh, she, uh, she was young, though. She was too young. She's 10 years younger than me. She was into horoscopes. Yeah. Horse, uh, that's for young people, right? Like, you're young. Now's the time, horoscopes. I'm just saying, you never hear successful people reference them. <laughs> Right. No one's like, listen, I know that I am a doctor, but I am also an Aries. <laughs> and we make quick decisions. <laughs> and that's why I amputated your wrong foot. <laughs> but I knew you would overact because you are a Scorpio and that's what Scorpios do. <laughs> I don't know. Have you, have you guys been to New York City? A round of applause, some of you? Yeah. <laughs> But the, the cool thing about New York City, like, especially if you're on a budget, the museums are either half price or free on Fridays. So me and this girl, we went, we went to the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. It's fantastic. It's amazing. I don't know that much about art, but it's all these amazing paintings. And then I saw the three paintings that I thought were the best, and I was excited. I go over, and I recognize the name, Picasso. Which got me excited, because I, I heard of this dude. Like, I know who this dude is. Which is impressive to me, because I only know the name of like eight artists, and four of them are Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I mean, I know Rembrandt too, but if he was so great, eh, he wouldn't have to sell toothpaste. <laughs> but these were the best. I was like, I'm like, these paintings are great. And she's like, let's go check out some others. I'm like, I'm just gonna hang here with the, the Picassos. And, uh, She's like, well, which one's your favorite? And I go, I don't know. The texture on this one feels different than the two over here. <laughs> and she's like, what are you talking about? And then I took her hand to try to show her and she freaked out, which is what you should do if someone tries to get you to touch a priceless painting. <laughs> like, I know, you can't touch them. I know that now. I wouldn't go back in time and touch them, but uh, I did. Uh, to make an example out of me, she asked a security guard, she goes, hey, what happens if you touch a painting? The guy goes, oh, you go to jail. We have surveillance cameras. Why? Did you see something? I was like, all right, we should go back to Planet Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I'm, I get it now. If I was there, I would never touch another painting. I know that now. And I was talking about this in uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania at a show. And some guy with like five teeth <laughs> After the show, comes up and he's like, hey man, I thought I was white trash, but then you're out there touching all those Picassos. <laughs> and, and, and you know what's a shame? Uh, I hate to admit this, I do think it's pretty cool I touched three Picassos. I, I do, I can't take it back. I mean, I wouldn't do it again, but I, I, I don't know. Does that make me white trash? I don't, I don't know, I went to one WrestleMania, I saw Leonard Skinner twice, and I touched three Picassos. Uh, <laughs> That might be the triple crown of white trash right there. I am. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I wasn't the most popular kid growing up. My mom was worried about my social life. I'll tell you guys about the first date I ever went on. I was 14 years old. This girl, Sarah, she was a big Pauly Shore fan. So I love Pauly Shore because she's like, yeah, he's amazing. So uh, she goes, oh, let's go see the movie Friday. The new Paul. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. I wore my best Bugle Boy pants. <laughs> I bought flowers. Uh, kids that I went to school with, I shouldn't blame him. Hey, what you got the flowers for? I'm like, I'm on a date with Sarah. It's like, really? You're dating her? I'm like, yeah, that's my girlfriend. Like, when'd you guys start dating? Like, uh, we hit go on the clock as soon as she gets here. That's. <laughs> she never shows. She never shows. And in my head, I'm like, maybe she got here really early. So I, like, I'm in the movie theater, like, what? I never saw her. So I'm just sitting there with me and my flowers watching a Pauly Shore movie. Uh, uh, turns out those movies aren't that great. I just, <laughs> not that great. And like, I wanted to sneak out because I didn't want kids to see me. So I like left the flowers and I bailed. And then some lady grabs the flowers and follows me out in the lobby. She's like, sir, sir, you forgot these. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I got them for a girl. She didn't show. It's like, you should give them to your mother. I'm like, no, my mom already thinks I'm a loser. I don't need to confirm that. Uh, 
It's like, so I take the flowers, I go next door to the Burger King, because that's where kids go after the movie. And I didn't want to just throw them away, because I knew kids would see them and put two and two together. So what I did is I went in the bathroom, and uh, instead of just, I didn't want to lay them on top, so I started taking garbage out of the garbage can. And I laid the flowers on the bottom, like I was just burying them, like I was burying my dignity, just. <laughs> Just getting it down there. And the whole time in my head, I'm like thinking, this is dating? Dating sucks. <laughs> like I could have stayed home and played video games and not felt this horrible about myself. Anyways, I get a Facebook friend request from Sarah a couple years ago. I accept it and I'm an adult. You know what she's doing? You know, some people put their jobs. She is the manager of that exact same Burger King. <laughs> I was like, wow, karma does exist, and it's in a trash can in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, yeah, go in the bathroom, get your flowers, lady. <laughs> ah, some applause. Yo. Oh, you're too kind. Uh, awesome, man. Uh, Dr. Pipple Popper. I don't know if you guys are into that show. <laughs> Oh, it hurts me because I had horrible acne when I was a kid. I had horrible, I was on Accutane. You guys probably don't know, what, they quit making it. It was linked to depression and teenage suicide. I knew something was up with that medication because when the doctor prescribed it, he called my mom in the room to let her know the side effects. But then to make me feel better, he started showing me the scars on his face. <laughs> yeah, like that was supposed to magically cheer me up. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm self-conscious about going to school tomorrow because of my acne. Now you're letting me know it's gonna scar me for the next 50 years? <laughs> it's like, what exactly causes the depression? Are you sure some medication? Because it could be these pep talks. <laughs> this is my worst acne story. Um, in high school, I got to take an art class. And um, I, I waited until I was a senior. Everyone else was in ninth grade, I was a senior. And we had to do an assignment. You had to draw someone in the class. And the kid that drew me just drew me with all my acne. <laughs> just this brutal drawing. Like all the white heads I tried to pop that didn't quite make it. <laughs> but he just happened to be the most talented kid in the class. <laughs> so his drawing ended up getting submitted to a bunch of student art shows. <laughs> and then when the art shows were over, my teacher took that drawing and hung it in the hallway <laughs> for the last three months of my high school life. So I had to like walk by my own shame every day. And that kid was always weird around me, but I was never mad at him. I was more mad at my art teacher. Like if I go back in time, I like to give him $20. I was like, hey man, can you draw a picture of our art teacher? And let's point out all of her insecurities. <laughs> like how about you draw a picture of her holding up her left hand, pointing out that she's 47 and has never been married. Can we get that drawing? <laughs> Or how about a drawing of all the grandchildren her parents will never see? Put that right in their living room. <laughs> Thank you. All right, some applause. Oh, some more applause. Oh, Utah. Here's the deal. Around the holidays as a comedian, we'll do a lot of corporate shows. And they pay well, but you, you got to be clean, politically correct. So I show up for this gig for a fiber optics company. I ask a little lady who hired me, like, hey, any rules, anything you want me to say or not say? She goes, no, you can just do your jokes, but if you can, can you please say the C word? I was like, wow, I really don't use that word at all. <laughs> I thought she was joking, so I joked back. I go, you know what? I'll say it five times in the first 10 minutes. She grabbed my arm and goes, that would be great. <laughs> because we got a lot of Catholics. <laughs> and they'll love it. That is very confusing. <laughs> so now I have to ask, go, hey, by the way, what is the C word you're talking about? And she says, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am glad that I asked. <laughs> because there is a whole other C word out there just floating around. <laughs> and anyone who thinks
Jesus word Christmas is too edgy, then they are probably not ready for the real C word. <laughs> So then she says to me, when she sees I'm like, oh, okay. She goes, oh, hey, by the way, what is the C word you thought I meant? And I go, Cleveland. And she goes, oh, no, you could talk about that. And I was like, all right, great. So an inside joke, I started the show for her to just be like, hey, Merry Christmas, Cleveland. And some guy's like, this is St. Louis. And I'm like, hang on, if you don't like it, I gotta bring up Anna. She insisted I say that four more times. <laughs> All right, you guys have been awesome. My name's Radio. Thank you, guys. <laughs>